Okay, we're moving right along. And the next thing we're going to talk about is the secure Linux repository. Now, this is another part of V11. So we talked about the object storage with Arc. We talked about the reporting of Veeam 1. And now we're going to talk about the secure Linux repository. So let me kind of preface this as my side hustle here at Veeam is to build ransomware resiliency awareness. And this is a technology that's really going to help. So I mentioned that there are three top line capabilities, but there's also, there's always more, right? And we have this hardened or secure Linux repository. I think secure Linux is going to be the way that the name that sticks. This is a technique that's going to help you beat ransomware. Now in the ransomware battle, we've heard it uh, yesterday. And you know, those of you as IT pros have dealt with it in some level before. I'm convinced that the single most effective specimen to be resilient against ransomware is to have one or more copies of data, backup data, that is in an ultra resilient media form. Now I made that word up. Again, if we were in person, you'd be throwing stuff at me. What is that? Well, offline, air gapped, or otherwise immutable. Those are the storage characteristics that are gonna be your most effective specimen to beat ransomware. Let me be real specific. When I talk to organizations who win, sometimes they use this and that's great. When I talk to organizations who win against ransomware and they don't have a backup copy here, that's luck and you don't wanna plan on luck. When I talk to organizations who don't come out of ransomware scenarios okay, they don't have a copy here. So this is what I advocate to organizations that we need to have some capability here where backup data goes here. So how do you do that? Well, there's a lot of ways. Now, the top, let's see, I, I guess that's green. The, the tape and the insider protection and offline drives and immutable backups, those are all available now with Veeam. And in the cloud, both with what I showed earlier, there's an incredible amount of backup data that Veeam customers have put into the cloud. So people are doing it, great. People are still using tape, great. People are using offline media, great. People are using our Veeam Cloud Connect with insider protection. That's been out for over four years, folks. So this is a great way to be resilient against ransomware. Now, I will say there are some storage snapshot techniques. Now that drifts over to Veeam partners that can be ultra resilient. So always look to see what your storage snapshots can do. Shout out to Pure Storage, Safe Mode Snapshots. Uh, NetApp has a retention lock, uh, NetApp snap lock. Those types of things are really meant to help in these types of uh, scenarios. And then some replication scenarios can um, come into play. They don't quite get my ultra resilient stamp. But um, the one thing that's coming soon, and that's what I'm going to talk about here, is the secure Linux repository. So I'm going to ask the same question. Should I do it live or should I do the video? I'm ready for both. So anybody always, a, live. always live. live. Okay. Now, I'm not a Linux expert, but I'm hoping that one of you are. So I want to just show you what I've configured. So I have this thing called a secure Linux repository. Now, the best thing about this, let's go back to, let's go back to green, the secure Linux repository. And we've talked about storage. So this theme of cloud data management, we're seeing it in each of these presentations down the way. Well, we actually plan this out. This secure Linux repository, um, I kind of blow a little bit of my cover here. It's on a Linux host with a path called V11 XFS. Hint, hint, I'm using the XFS file system. And it's on um, a system called blah, 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 Ubuntu. Now, what we've done here, and this is actually really smart, because we've intentionally made the properties of this repository, and all of this is exactly the same as what we're doing now, except for there's one new thing here. Make recent backups immutable for a specified number of days. So we're using some Linux immutability attributes, and when we put this backup data on these Linux systems, and the best part is any backups that come here will be subject to this policy. So we don't have these, we're not going to walk into these scenarios where this backup job got the immutable and that didn't, right? We're just going all in and that's really smart. Um, I don't think it could be any easier to do than this. Now, this is coming in our V11. This is one of the most anticipated features that we have coming. Now, is anybody on the call good with Linux? Anybody? Can I get a, like, can I get a, uh, can I get anybody that like, really can, can spell Linux and XFS way better than me. I am not, but I wanna show you something here. So this is that path. Let me just be a little bit more full here. Um, we're gonna go down. This is that same path we were just looking at, okay? 
And the, let's go with the blue. The job name right here is example two immutable backups. I'm printing out this directory here and I've done a listing. Now, some people watching this might recognize the uh, inventory of files here. Let's go back to green. And VIBs and VBKs, those are full Veeam backups and Veeam increments. This is the data I need if I need to do a recovery. So the Veeam console could be completely destroyed, lost, compromised, whatever. But if I have this data, I'm good. Now, does anybody in the Linux world know what the LS attribute means? Okay, now again, I'm not a Linux expert but maybe some of you have used this command up here, okay? Does anybody know what this I over here means? That's your immunity bit. Yeah, was that Steven? Yeah. Yeah, good shot there, Steven. So let me, let me pivot it a little bit more. I'm gonna take this very last file down here, okay? This very last file. And let me see here. Um, anybody know the best way to delete a file? Anybody? Let's try this. RM, let's just try the easy one. Uh, uh, RM, oh, I got a, a, a slash in there, so it's not going to work, okay? So what I'm trying to do down here, so I'm going to try to remove my, my incremental backup. You see that down there at the bottom? Let's try it, okay? Uh, well, it does exist. What did I do? RM, oh, it's, uh, it's got a space in the dash. Yeah, you got to put it in quotes. See, I told you I don't know anything about Linux. Thank you. Was that, uh, was that Ned? It was. Okay, Ned. So you know a little bit about Linux. Oh, um, God. oh but I got to right. put it in the right spot. <laughs> that makes a difference too. See, I promise this one's live. Um, a real elite hackers action on exactly. Going on okay, Whoa. this is what elite? I'm looking for. Elite. Uh, uh, yes, exactly. All right. What happens if you run it with with sudo? Same command. Just drop sudo on it. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go home sudo. I might have to drop in the credential. So something like that, Ned. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay, and I am going to put in the right password. I'm not going to play any smoke and mirror. -y. Still no bacon. Now, I had a vegetarian breakfast, but this is telling me I'm not having any bacon. Okay, so that is not what I'm getting at. Anybody, I'll open it up. Anybody have any other more aggressive delete type activities that we can try? You could delete the directory that it exists in. Uh, okay, let's try it. Oh, I have not tested that, but I'm going to just... Yeah, we're running low on time, Stephen. I'm just going to make sure our QA is tested. <laughs> I don't want to um, break your thing, but no. I, uh, let's see. Uh, how do I do that, Ned? How do uh, I do? Well, you're back. Go back up one directory. Oh, I, I, that's I'm in there. Okay. Oh, you're in that. Which, okay. You're well, in I, that I go up. Right. So now this is. So if I do a ls here, that's the folder that I'm caring about. Mm-hmm. Okay. Armdur. Do uh, sudo. Nope. Nope. Sudo space rm space dash rf space, and, then that, okay. and then the name of the directory you want to delete would i need a, a quote because you the... would need a quote and if you start typing it there you go so something like that something like that look at that still <laughs> no bacon no bacon now i actually didn't know how that was going to go but that is where we're going to stop on this demo um, what I'm getting at, friends, is this is a very easy way to manage your data. This is before it goes up to the cloud. This secure Linux repository is a V11 capability that we're going to have built in. No additional Veeam cost. That's actually really important. And I should have mentioned that earlier, that the uh, um, secure Linux repository, in addition to the scale-out backup repository, that software-defined at the management level, secondary storage system that's cloud-ready, that doesn't have any additional beam cost either. It's really, really legit. Um, is this bare metal? Uh, um, it fine. can be. It's Linux, baby. You can put it anywhere you want. Anywhere you can run Linux. Mm -hmm. I got a question too, um, because I, I've worked ransomware cases and yeah. I've seen things happening. And I've, I've just just when I when you when I saw you just deleting files, I'm like, hmm, yeah, okay, you can do that. But I've seen the bad guys basically initialize whole storage arrays just to destroy backups. So um, yeah. I think that's that's a level that you can't do much about, um, and the whole thing is lost as soon as they get that far. I think you're right. Um, and the other thing is, um, what happens? if like an, uh, a backup like this 
is taking up so much space that I have a legit reason to remove it. Um, can I do that? Because if I run out of space, I cannot backup anymore. So I may, may, might need to do that. And if I can do that as a normal user, then an attacker can find that too. So uh, how do you protect yeah. against that? First scenario, uh, Jasper, is um, one thing I didn't cover is this notion of single-use Linux credentials. Okay, this is an additional construct and how that is put into the Linux system. It's a great opportunity for a user manual, which isn't ready yet. Okay, but I'm just going to leave that there. And the second part is I would actually really recommend that that be used in conjunction with the scale out backup repository. So, um, Jasper, if a storage resource is full, that's the whole premise of the scale out backup repository is to scale it out. You might remember in the one that I had here, I intentionally had three NAS devices. So if I had three Linux systems that were doing that secure Linux repository and were floating full, guess what I do? I'll add a fourth. It has this spill and spill mentality. So it's very well equipped for that very problem. And even if it's only one resource, in fact, piece of Veeam trivia that I'll win you a bet at a bar is that the scale up backup repository was actually initially built to solve the problem of my one backup repository is full. So it's a logical construct that can allow me to seal, which is something that I think Anthony spoke about in one of the previous tech field days. This technology, the scale up backup repository is so deep in conjunction with the other ones, Jasper, but I think we have an answer with the scale up backup repositories, maintenance mode, extent, seal, those types of things. So. Um, evacuate, those types of things for sure. Uh, a couple things. One, we have a lot of ransomware resources and that's where the QR code is. For those watching the video and, and such, um, I've written a paper, uh, Kirsten and Melissa's paper on the ransomware detection is over there. And then as a broader part of V11, which includes the two capabilities I've shown and what um, Kirsten and Melissa have shown, the go.com slash V11 page. 